Do you feel different at all when you put the makeup on? Yeah, I do. I do feel a bit different. This kind of music, this kind of belief system, it's got it's got very little to do with being a human being and showing yourself as a human being. As human beings, and even as spirits, we are all individual and we are all alone. We are very alone. Even if you have a soulmate in this world, you can you can still you can still feel so utterly alone. When we die, we are alone. The whole thing of wearing the corpse paint, it helps me remove the human factor. You know, it takes the way the human factor of making the music and just like, it's just a music that like, it was formed by itself, like. Makes it a little bit more mysterious, mythical, like. It is an image, it's an image for the record, and it's, um, I think it's important. Like, done well, of course, paint is, I think it's cool. I know it's goofy, but um, there's something to it that adds atmosphere. used to have like long hair, wear the corpse paint, and black robes, but you, you don't do that anymore. What I do is what it's all about, not what I look like. It just kind of started seeming kind of juvenile to me. There's nothing I, that, like I can't stand more, is like somebody who's like, you know, in their 50s or something, and they're still wearing corpse paint. Or their, their black metal shirts just have teen angst written all over them, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's just time to really cut the crap. You know, the way my life really is, and the way I really feel is like, I don't want to portray myself as anything. You know, I don't need positive or negative kind of attention, and if I have like long hair and have to go to the grocery store, I don't feel like talking about dark throne with a fellow long-haired person. I just, I want to, you know, like, I don't talk to people. When I say I want to be left alone, I'm, I'm just, I mean it, you know? Ashbury, uh, where I lived for about 10 years. Is this where you recorded like all the early demos and yeah. like 10 sub-level of Suicide and all, the, all those records? Yeah, uh, I recorded everything up to Tentacles of Horror here. A long period of time, I got up, went and got coffee, work on music, go to work. This is when I worked in North Beach, go to work. Work all day, come home, work work on music until I went to sleep. You know, that's all I did really. I uh, poured everything into that. It was it was the only release I had. You know, all I wanted to do was make music. Like I would leave work early sometimes. There was like just no like social no social interaction with like a lot of people, or no, it was just I don't, like well, I don't not, I don't fucking I don't go out. I don't go to bars. I don't go to. Sh I don't even go to a lot of shows just because I fucking can't stand being around people. I've had some pretty, pretty intense experiences in this building. And I saw, I don't know, I just seen, I've seen some crazy shit in that room. Completely so. And it would make you feel like uptight? And... Well, it's just, it's kind of weird to even talk about, you know, because it's like, I don't, I 
I don't know if I can articulate right. exactly what the experience was like, but uh, it was pretty freaky. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time, I lived here for 10 years, went through a lot of shit in that room right there. And when did you when did you leave? Like, what was the, what, what were the circumstances under like how you left? Uh, I tried to end my life in that room right there. Um, didn't work out. So, and then I ended up uh, moving to Oakland. Uh, that's a long story. That's really not for other people. Leviathan has always been an outlet for Jeff's pain and aggression, but in 2001 he released a different kind of demo under the name Lurker of Chalice. The music remained really dark, but expressed a more complex range of sounds and emotions. If, if I were to do Leviathan live, I would play drums and somebody else would sing. It would be like a Leviathan cover band, you know, it would be weird. So, um, that's kind of why that's never happened. I've never never want to be the guy who like has to show somebody all the guitar parts and all that stuff. And when did uh, like the Lurker of Chalice stuff start coming into play? Just like, it's just a, like other, me other music I have in me that's not, you know, you know. Right, right. Leviathan is like all that anger and fucking hatred I can fucking muster. And it's not hard to muster, but it's like, it's, that's where that comes from. And Lurker wasn't, there was, yeah. There was a muse for Lurker uh, at the time when, so, uh, she's dead, so that's probably, I don't think Lurker will happen again. That's when Jeff started opening up to me off camera. In 2006, his longtime girlfriend Jessie was diagnosed with brain cancer. After a year of extreme pain, she committed suicide. Every time she stayed in my house, she'd always write me, because I'd leave at work, and she'd stay in bed, she'd always write me a note. I to save them all. Jeff then tried to take his own life. He survived, but hasn't recorded any new Leviathan or Lurker tracks since. When did you become first aware of this connection with nature? How old are you? What, what, what were the circumstances? Been, probably about 12, 13. My parents would, you know, force me to go to like a Christian and a Mormon church and to go in, you know, like a mass gathering like that, I just felt nothing spiritual at all. I thought, this does nothing for me. How can these people believe in all this stuff? For me, it always felt like I could feel something, a spiritual essence when I was by myself. And that was also around the same time that I was getting into black metal. And I found that the feeling that I got from nature and black metal music was exactly the same thing. Even though they were so separate, I thought, how can you get like something like nature and, and music? It's just music. How can, why is it I'm feeling this same kind of entity? And that's the foundation for, you know, creating my own music. It just went hand in hand. Whether I'm out here or whether I'm in my bedroom composing music on, on the guitar. And sometimes I will transcend my astral body. So I'll be sitting in my room going playing, you know, all this dissonant kind of black metal riffs. And at the same time, I can transcend to forests. Well, I'm always connected. It's a part of me. It's always there.
was a time when I was listening to Telepathic with the Deceased extensively, repetitively. Uh, it was during the winter time, it was in Chicago, just bleak, gray, overcast. I wasn't feeling so great, but I would listen to this record every single day and it made a lot of sense to me. Do you think that's the appeal of that record? Is that who it's made for? I've made a lot of um, albums during a, a lot of terrible, awful times and that one probably was uh, made at a very hard I just like, yeah, I just had like a, I don't, I don't like really have real flashbacks because like I've only done acid once by accident. So, but I was having a, like a different kind of flashback and I was just like, <laughs> like I was remembering really bad shit, you know. That album was just more, uh, that was a really strange, really strange one to me. Like I, I was like really uh, losing my mind at the time, basically. I couldn't tell the difference between day and night and I couldn't tell the difference between one week or from the next or one month. Or I, you know, I was like, like I looked around me, is this life or is it not, you know? Luckily, I was able to take that and make something out of it, you know. I'm realizing more and more that I like a lot of other things and, you know, like, you know, if I hear music like um, Lycia or um, Kansas. <laughs> Look who's here. Oh, gosh. Rare appearance. <laughs> Like hearing music like that inspires me to play black metal. Not black metal doesn't inspire me to play black metal anymore, you know? I, I would really like to do something completely different and kind of stick to it for a while too. I wouldn't try to make happy music dark, that I would just be not me. And, uh, but, you know, I, I think of it like, well, what if, I, what if I put my touches to this completely different kind of music that I like? Like, I think to myself, how fucked up would that be, you know? Like, fucked up, you know, in, in, in the way I like, you know? Okay. I get it. People identify what I've done with black metal. And I'd like to take what I do and turn it into something that doesn't have a name. When it comes to writing a lot of lyrics, mentally, you know, emotionally, like I have to go somewhere like, you know, that's really what it is. Like I have to go somewhere where I really don't want to go. But there's something, there, 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 there's something there. Uh, is it something like that happened in your past that you're trying to, you know, revisit in your own way and it's, figure it it's, out. It's the future. It's the future and it's the past both, you know. It, it, it is, you know. Sometimes I'll step into my own future and past and I'll step through the eyes of someone else's future and past a lot of time.
Are you ever afraid that you're not going to get out of that space? On one hand, I, I, I wonder if I ever really did make it out. Maybe this is uh, one of the people I've turned into, and this person now is nobody.